Hey guys and welcome back to another F30 video. This is a topic I get asked a lot about, so I thought I'd do a more informational video to cover all the maintenance done to this car since owning it from new, as well as to cover some of the more common F30 maintenance parts and problems. Hopefully this video will help other owners or potential buyers looking for a used F30, so please feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or advice that I've missed out in this video. Before we go any further, I'm sure most of you have heard of the difference between original parts and OEM parts, but I just wanted to quickly explain what they are, at least from my understanding of it. So original parts are direct replacement parts from BMW, and they are the parts that you would get when you replace something in the official service center. OEM parts, however, are made by the same manufacturers that produce some of these parts for BMW, but under their own brand. As such, they are cheaper and usually still quality products, though to keep the cost down, it is possible that they may not last as long. In my opinion, the decision to go OEM or original depends on what part you are looking at, besides your budget of course, so speak to your mechanic to see if they think an OEM part will be sufficient or if they strongly recommend going with an original part. Some of the more common brands I've seen are Lamforda, Mazda and Techstar. I usually get my parts from Stuttgart Parts in Taman Mayang and they are really great to work with and have been in the industry for many many years so check them out especially for parts you can replace yourself like wipers and aircon filters. You can also get parts directly from them and ask your regular mechanic to replace them for you. So we've had this car from new since 2012 but it's done relatively low mileage and it's currently at about 70,000 kilometers. While the car was under warranty, there wasn't much that was replaced, though we did manage to replace the whole steering rack assembly just before the warranty ended due to the usual noise coming from the steering rack. However, the sound actually came back and I was told that it was because there wasn't a revision to the actual part that was causing the noise then yet, which made them come out with the repair kit. So more on this later. After the warranty ended, we replaced four-wheel speed sensors, but this was done in pairs it's a very common F30 issue and you'll get a bunch of error codes on your iDrive that sounds really serious and scary. Your mechanic will be able to scan and tell which sensor is faulty. It was about 300 plus ringgit per piece for an original part at the time, but I believe it should be cheaper now and we've not had issues since. We also had a low coolant warning that turned out to be the coolant sensor, so we replaced the coolant tank and sensor set which cost about 550 ringgit, including labor for original parts. We also replaced a rear brake light socket as it was constantly detecting a failed bulb even after we replaced the bulb. I can't remember how much this was, but it wasn't too expensive. A lot of this work was done in Liam Tire Tamantun, and they've looked after a lot of my cars over the years, so I highly recommend them. In terms of wear and tear, we replaced the battery after about 7 years with a Vata Silver AGM battery for about 1,300 ringgit including coding. These AGM batteries are definitely more expensive than your regular batteries because of the requirements of the start-stop system, but they do last a long time. We replaced all 4 brake pads and rotos with original parts and serviced the brake fluid. They are about 2,000 ringgit to 3,000 ringgit for an original set but there are also OEM options available, though I would recommend going with at least original brake pads. The car is also on its second set of run-flat tyres. The run-flats have really proven its worth on multiple trips, and in a family car, I believe they are totally worth the sacrifice in comfort due to the security you get from not having to worry about a flat tyre. They are quite expensive to replace though at about 1000 plus ringgit per piece, though the prices seem to have come down over the years. These are for 18-inch 225-45-18 tyres. The M Sport staggered set will be slightly more and the 17-inch on the other models will be slightly cheaper. Non-run flat tyres are of course a much cheaper option. I also recently replaced the turbo inlet pipe as you've seen from the last video which is about 200 plus ringgit for an original pipe. I also had the steering rack repair kit done by the guys at L Technique and this finally fixed the infamous steering rack noises. It cost only about 3 to 400 ringgit to do, so it was totally worth it. 
There may be instances where the whole steering rack assembly may need to be changed though, and that can be quite expensive. I think it's over 10,000 ringgit, but there are usually used options available too. Other than that, it's just been the usual stuff like wipers and the air filter. The spark plugs on my car were checked by my mechanic during the 60k service, and they were fine, but they are roughly about 3 to 400 ringgit to replace when needed. Speaking of the 60,000 km service, I replaced the transmission oil with the oil pan and filter kit, which costs about 900 ringgit. Though BMW claims that the transmission fluid is lifetime, it is commonly advised that you still service the oil at reasonable intervals, like the 60k mark. There's lots of information out there regarding this that you can read up on if you are interested. There's also the rare axle oil that you should change at the same time, which I did too. A typical engine oil service, on the other hand, would cost around 400 to 500 ringgit at about 10,000 kilometers or one year intervals. The absorbers on my car are also coming to a point where they likely need to be changed as they are feeling extra soft and floaty, and with this, there are a few options available. An original set would cost roughly 2 to 3,000 ringgit, including new top mounts. I think there are also OEM options at slightly cheaper prices. However, this is also a great time to upgrade, and Bilstein's are a popular option. Usually, the B6 set that pairs with your original springs for 3,000 plus ringgit, and the B12s that is essentially a B8 set with lowered IBUC springs that is about 4,000 plus ringgit. Of course, we can't talk about the N20 without the timing chain guide issue coming up. So a really quick summary is that the early N20 engines, up to 2015 I believe, have a faulty timing chain guide that if it fails, will result in the engine possibly needing a rebuild. A timing chain replacement as preventive maintenance will cost 4 to 6,000 ringgit depending on whether OEM or original parts are used. This is a whole topic by itself, so it's something that you should discuss with your mechanic depending on the mileage of your car and there are some checks that could be done to try and determine if there are early symptoms such as loud whines or even visual checks. The turbo oil line seems to be another possible part that may need replacement, especially if you're seeing white smoke when starting the car and in more isolated cases, you may need to rebuild or replace the turbo too. There are also small things like charge pipes and boost pipes made of plastic that are known to fail, but there are upgraded parts available for preventive maintenance. Generally though, I really believe that the F30 is quite a reliable car, and the cost of maintenance and parts are really reasonable especially with OEM parts available. The age of the cars of course is a factor, especially with higher mileage examples, and you can't compare them to new Toyotas or Hondas, but it's a car that is worth the extra effort and care. There are many reputable independent workshops and BMW specialists that are familiar with the car, so you just need to find someone you are comfortable with who will then be able to take care of the car long term. So I hope this video has helped answer some of your questions around maintaining an F30, especially one with an N20 engine like the 320i and 328i, as the B48 or diesel and hybrid models would have slightly different issues. As mentioned earlier, leave a comment if you have any questions that I did not address in this video. And even if I don't know the answer, my hope is for other fellow owners to chip in so we can help each other out. If you are an F30 owner, please feel free to share your experience too so it helps others. So that's it for this video. There's lots more coming up. Please leave the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.